100 quadrillion mealworms. This is how many worms we would need to break down every piece of plastic on our planet in one year. And that might seem like a lot of insects to you, because it is, but these bugs reproduce quickly. If I spent $10 today and bought a thousand mealworms, I could have over 100 quadrillion worms before 2030. I'm George Genese, a Brooklynite studying environmental science at UCLA with a love for animals and the movie WALL-E. If you haven't seen it, it's about a robot that cleans up all of Earth's trash. And he's kind of my role model. Just like WALL-E, I have a mission too. I want to see if there's a safe and economical way to turn plastic waste into fresh, healthy food. And I know what you're thinking. This is the worst idea I've ever heard in my entire life. But hear me out. I think this could actually work. About two years ago, I was wandering around in a room used by one of UCLA's sustainability clubs, and I noticed a container full of styrofoam chunks and mealworms crawling all over them. When I took a closer look, I couldn't believe it. And when I found out that these insects were actually eating this plastic, I needed to learn more. Since there were only two other groups studying and publishing on this topic, I read through the rest of the limited literature and began ultimately just taking care of and observing these worms myself. Now, 40 other students, a few faculty mentors and I, are working with these worms and researching their ability to eat plastics. As we observe these worms, we confirm that they are able to eat plastics such as styrofoam. And they particularly enjoy styrofoam because its soft texture makes it easy for them to chew. This is the same styrofoam that takes up about 30% of the volume of our landfills. And left unchecked, this will continue to pollute our environment and can cause serious health effects for humans. And landfills are just the tip of the iceberg. The EPA estimates that about 9% of plastics have ever been successfully recycled. On top of that, an average human eats about a credit card worth of microplastics every week. So how do we stop this from happening? Luckily, mealworms are willing and able to eat this plastic for us. Similar to most animals, mealworms have bacteria in their stomach which allow them to digest their food. Unlike most animals, mealworms have 12 specific bacteria in their stomach that allow them to break down plastics such as styrofoam. This allows one worm to eat about a milligram of polystyrene or styrofoam every week. 30,000 worms could eat a styrofoam cup in a day, and 100 quadrillion worms could eat every piece of plastic on our planet in one year. The fact that mealworms are able to break down plastic alone is exciting, but what if we could simultaneously use this process to produce fresh, healthy food? The first question we'd have to ask ourselves would be, where is this plastic going and would that be safe? Well, after a mealworm eats styrofoam, the plastic can end up in one of three places. It's either respirated out as CO2, incorporated into the worm, or excreted as waste. Now you might be concerned that some of the plastic is ending up in the worm, but don't worry, this plastic is being safely integrated into the worm as fat. The challenge comes in figuring out what to do with the mealworm's waste. While normal mealworm waste is commercially sold as a fertilizer, the plastics in our mealworm's waste need to be processed a little bit more before we can use it as a fertilizer. We're looking at purifying this waste with a variety of fungi and bacteria and hoping this can help us make a safe plastic to food pathway. Imagine if we were able to take plastic waste to a facility that not only broke it down, but used the byproducts from that process to produce mealworms, mushrooms, vegetables, and fruits. Now, with all these crazy ideas floating around, it's hard to think of one concise answer to the problem at hand. We've thought about it a little bit, and we've come up with the idea of an urban aquaponics greenhouse that uses plastic to power the growth of its plants. Aquaponics is a soilless gardening technique that uses the waste from fish to nutrify water to grow plants. Incorporating mealworms into this system could help us funnel many of these byproducts from plastic breakdown into the growth of plants. For example, the mealworms themselves could be used as a fish food, while their waste could be used to nutrify the water, and the CO2 that the worms emit could even be used to promote the growth of plants. We're hoping to take these natural processes and take a step towards sustainable agriculture and safe plastic composting. While a plastic-powered aquaponics greenhouse is an exciting concept in and of itself, there are so many other ways to use plastic-eating bacteria. While mealworms can't swim, we think we can use them to help clean up the plastic in our oceans. What if we gave the same marine life that was suffering from microplastic pollution the tools they needed to clean it up? In the same way that humans put their gut bacteria into mice to test different ways to improve our own gut health, 
we could take the gut bacteria from mealworms and put them into fish and whales. As these animals swam through the ocean, they could filter and clean out the water for themselves. Another idea we're particularly excited about is a plastic degrading bioreactor, which uses the same bacteria as we find in the mealworm stomach to degrade plastics like styrofoam into bioavailable nutrients for plants. And while there's a lot more work to be done before a safe plastic to food pathway is possible, each one of us has the power to change the world today. I know you might not have time to build an aquaponics greenhouse powered by plastic or splice mealworm DNA into your goldfish or even build a bioreactor, I get it. But there's more plastic on this planet than ever before. We need to inspire a fundamental shift in the way we think about our plastic waste. Minimizing my personal waste has been a rewarding and creative process. I've saved money and simultaneously driven my roommates crazy by washing, freezing, and reusing all of our tin foil in Ziploc bags. But we need to keep in mind that recycling is not the burden of an individual. We need to hold large plastic polluters accountable for their actions and dissolve this idea that recycling is our individual responsibility. But I think we can all learn a thing or two from Wally. -E. Instead of looking at plastic waste as a nuisance that we have to deal with, we can look at it as an opportunity to build something amazing. As a species, we have traveled to the moon, sequenced our own genome, and even invented guacamole. But all this means nothing if packing peanuts are what's going to drive us to extinction. Together, we can do this. Let's take a more natural approach to plastic waste management, and let's make it to 100 quadrillion mealworms.